Well, hello everyone. It's been a while huh, since the last video. Uh, well, you know, part of the reason why I waited so long was because they were releasing the new configurator, which they had, um, Vlad has sent me an email told, telling me that, you know, they were about to change it up. So he recommended that I, that I don't post any new videos showing the old configurator, <clears throat> which I thought was a good idea. Um, and as we've said before, you know, things are always going to be changing, but um, as long as he gave me a, you know, pretty good heads up right now, um, it was worth waiting uh, since it was not going to take too long to do the next change. So this video here is just a little short one to answer a question from one of the followers who asked me he wanted to connect uh, one of these uh, five pin switches that are momentary push buttons and they also have a light integrated in them so he wanted to connect one for the uh, caution master caution and one for the fire fire warning lights I guess like the ones on the 737 the Zeebo. Um so I decided that instead of trying to answer this question um, through text which will be a little bit long I would just make a short video showing him how to wire them and I don't know he probably doesn't need help configuring it but I might as well show that too and it's, it also serves a purpose that we'll get to look at the shiny new configurator. Might as well, right? So first things first, let me get myself out of the shot here and then we'll get started. I just wanted to uh, go over this. I'm not sure if those are the types of switches that he was asking me about. Um, but if they're not, you know, these are the ones I'm using for my master caution and also for the fire. If I look at the fire warning ones. Those are some big switches. They're probably about, you know, one one inch square or, or a little bit bigger than that. You know, but the premise is the same. If you look in back of them, you can see that the switches have a, uh, you know, the, the three contacts right here. One of these would be for normally open and one for normally closed. And then it has one contact here on the top and another one on the bottom, which you could probably see better on this picture. So this would be the negative for the light and this is a positive. And then this is a negative for the switch and this is a positive uh, for the normally open switch part of it so that's that's that one right there that's the one that uh that i use for that now i'm not sure if that's what you're using or not but the like i said before the idea is the same you're going to have you know three contacts for the switch a ground a normally open and a normally closed and you're going to have two contacts for the light now these lights right here they're actually uh, 12 volts and I, I had to use a separate power supply to to power those and I actually went through relays in order to send the relays the signal of when to turn on and off um, I did make another video I think completely about that um, how to how to wire the relays and all that stuff and they also have instructions on the HCSCI website on how to do that um, but if you want to just look at my other video that I made regarding that um, you'll probably find that helpful as well all right so the switches that we're talking about here are are what you would call kind of like a Cori type switch because they are uh, you know like they have the switch and they are have the light built in they usually have some kind of lettering or something but I mean obviously we're not trying to buy the real ones because as you can see this is an actual aircraft push switch and it costs a lot of money so we're not trying to get into buying, you know, real ones. And on the HCSCI website, they do have a section on how to make, make your own with an LED light and then a, a push button switch. But I'm too lazy even to do that. So I just go to eBay and I just basically put square push button switch with light. And then you get all kinds of different switches. But the ones I'm, I'm looking at, the ones like the ones I have here on the table are like these right here but most of the time um, you need to get them through China because sometimes they're very hard to find here in the US and when you do find them they're kind of expensive so obviously right here you see that these right here are, are 12 volts and 5 volts and I did find that with the 5 volts they are bright enough to use just with the 5 volts and you can get them in all kinds of colors you know you can get them in red white blue yellow and green um, and they have rectangular ones and they also have uh, square ones and then they also have latching ones and then they also have momentary ones so you can decide um, you know if you want them to latch 
which we which to the configurator and for the whole building of your cockpit it would it would look like a toggle switch but if you just want them to be momentary push buttons then you would of course get the ones that say momentary only so we're going to go ahead and look at the ones that i have here on the table real quick and uh, as you can see i have uh, three different ones uh, one of each color i didn't i don't think i've ever gotten any blue ones or white ones you know but you can uh, just choose the ones you want to do um, if you want to do something like for example get creative you know like and, and maybe you can use something like this you know like to use them like for the the mcp of the 737 and other airplanes i think for this one right here i just i painted it over with a black marker and then i wrote with white text and then i just left a little part on the bottom so that it can illuminate you know when you activate it and you'll see a little bit later on how that looks this one right here looks a little bit better quality um, i actually used black tape and uh and then i wrote with the same white pen but it looks a little bit better i'm sure those of you that have uh 3D printers and laser engravers or sketchers or whatever, you know, you can do a much better job. Um, and then, like I said before, you can get them like this one, which is just a momentary push button. It doesn't latch. Or you can get them like this one, which does latch. Um, so you can see that when I press it, it stays lower. And then to release it, you press it again. But it's all the same basic principle, you know, it's just uh, how you want to do it. So the way you wire these things so these things come with uh with five contacts here and the reason is um one of these will be the ground and if you look real closely you might be able to see let me see if i can get it to to show you might be able to see that they have letters on there um on the switch itself and it says one of them says uh c for common which would be the ground another one says no for normally open and another one says nc for normally closed so obviously the ground you would put it where where the ground you know the common one goes and then normally you would want them normally open so that they only make contact when you close the switch when you when you click on it so that's how you would wire them and then for the light the light are the two ones on the on the outside here and since I used to think these were LEDs, but they're not. So you can connect the positive and the negative wherever you want. Now, what I've done here on these, um, you can see right here that I actually just jumped the negative from the one for the light to the other one that I was going to use for the for the switch right here. And then I would just take the normally open to one of the pins on the Arduino or the multiplexer or whatever I want to use and then one of these is going to go to the pin where the LED is going to be assigned to or the light it's, even though it's not an LED in this case but it, it still works as you'll see a little bit later on so the only thing you need to figure is you know if if yours doesn't have the letters right there you just need to figure out which one is normally open and which one is normally closed and then uh, that would you know that you would be able to find out with a multimeter just using the continuity all right okay this one right here is the same thing I just put a jumper between the the common for the switch to the ground for the light and then just take one gr ground wire and then I put um, one wire for the normally open on the switch and one wire for the light so I'm gonna be connecting both of these and then you'll see so let's jump over to the website and we're going to take a look at the configurator here. So we have the brand new configurator here, which uh, if you guys remember the way it used to look before when you would go to the, you can actually still see it right now. If you go to this and then you go to the old configurator for the old, for the planes. Remember, this is the way it used to be before. And this one right here, all it allows you to do right now is to select you know the different panels for that particular airplane so you can assign them um, you know but if we want to go back to the to the original one you just click config up here and then you can see the new one now this is a little bit prettier obviously you know because it has an actual layout of the Arduino so you can kind of see where you're assigning the pins and you can select 
between the LAN version and it'll block out the pins that are not available or you can select the USB version and it'll block out the pins that are not available there so it's kind of nice um, you know and, and I'm not gonna go so much into the whole thing again because the, the premise is pretty much the same as it was before it's just basically instead of having all the lines over here with just the numbers now you have a picture so you know if you want to assign like in a multiplexer or as an output multiplexer here or a direct LED which is kind of what we're gonna do later on right now you just basically click on the pin that you want and then you select it you know the same as it was before so but this is for an LED driver you know so we don't want to do that right now so anyway um that's how that goes so in, in order for us to um, I think we're gonna we're gonna use the old version for this just because I want to assign uh, a couple of things on the 737 and it's gonna be a lot easier to do it on the other one so we're gonna go ahead and go to the to the old airplanes here well see this one doesn't give you that option only the one in the Cessna 172 so we're gonna go ahead and go there we're gonna go to the Zebo and we're gonna go to the MCP um, what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna do it directly on the Arduino right now um, just to make it easier but so basically you select you know this is for the button whatever you want to do for the button so I'm gonna go ahead and put the button on uh, let's just say f just for the sake of argument I'll put it on uh, 52 or 51 I'm sorry so I'll go ahead and put that there for the button and then I'll go ahead and put the light which will be right here I will put that on on 53 just so I can keep them close all right so that's good for that and then what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm gonna put the red one um, let's see yeah I'll put the red one to be the auto uh, the autopilot disconnect so I'll go ahead and use this for the light and I'll just go ahead and put that on uh, just so they won't be in the way I'll put that on A8 and then the button which will be the bottom one so we can clear the warning uh, we'll put that on A7 all right so that's it for that so I'm gonna go ahead and save this simple configuration file all right so now let's get rid of the browser here and let's go to the to here so if you remember I told you that I don't even remember anymore so I'm gonna have to kind of look at it anyway so we can just come back and look at the at the browser so we're gonna put the autopilot heading on 51 that would be the the button so we're gonna go ahead and use uh, first of all the ground you know it's gonna go to ground so we'll just uh, we'll just put it right here and then we're gonna do this is for the autopilot heading oh shoot I need to get a little pin or something a little piece of wire all right so we'll go ahead and put this on 51 right there and then this one's gonna be the the heading so we'll go ahead and put that on 53 gotta be careful not to do the the last one because that's uh, ground all right so that's the autopilot heading one here now I'm gonna go ahead and do this one is gonna be for the autopilot disengage so once again the ground it just goes to the ground like all the other things do and then this is the one for the switch so the switch is gonna be on uh, uh, a7 so we'll just put that over here on A7. Oops. And then the light, which is the one on the outside. Remember the two outside ones are for the light and the inside ones, the three in the middle are for the switch. So the light, we're gonna put it on A8. So we'll just stick that right in here. Oops. And once again, you know, you can connect these 
everywhere wherever you want you know i can connect the switches if i wanted to i can connect them on the out input multiplexer over here and then if i had a like if i had one of these wired one of the dm 13 a's you know led drivers um, i can actually use one of those to do that even though these are not leds and i haven't tried it with an led driver so i to tell you the truth i don't even know if that would work but it should because all it's doing is sending the same you know voltage through the line all right so that's it so now let me see if i can uh zoom into this a little bit here all right so once again i'm gonna just go through here so the ground from both switches is just going to my ground rail over here um, this is the light for the heading the heading uh, autopilot thing when it's on it's gonna it's going to pin number 53 and then this is the light for the auto autopilot or i'm sorry yeah the autopilot disconnect this one right here is going to a8 and then the switch to clear that warning is going to go to a7 and if you remember that's the way that i had it here on the configurator so i'm going to go ahead and uh start up explain and then i'll be right back okay here we are in the simulator now and as you can see i'm still running an older version of the plugin is 1.0.72 just because i haven't used it since the last video i made on the laptop because most of the time i only use the laptop when i record a video so we're going to go ahead and go over to the to the mcp panel here and we do show that we have two inputs and two outputs which is you know what we should have so we're going to concentrate on that and i'll put this camera here all right so we're going to go ahead and engage the autopilot first here and we'll click on the heading select and as you can see our little light came on i'm not sure if you're able to pick that up here i think you can let's see i'll turn it off and on so there it is so right there we can see the heading select is on and then I did I only did the red one which is uh, when you disconnect the autopilot so that's why that one's there so you can see that I can push this to turn it off and then if I push it again we turn on the heading select and the light comes on you can I don't know if you can see but there's a little bit of light bleed around so that's why I need to figure out a better way to do that to you know because I just painted it black and there's still a little bit of light bleed but I think that when you're looking at it you know head on you really can't see too much like that and I think the one with the black tape will probably work better this one right here that I made after uh, but I haven't tried hooking this one up so I'm not even sure all right so now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the autopilot And you see that we're getting the warning here, which is that one right there. And then if we want to just turn off the warning, we would just press the button and it would clear the warning and turn off the light. So that's pretty much all there is to it. You know, once again, there's the whole thing right there, all the wiring. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this little video. Um, it's not as short as I thought it was going to be because I always end up talking too much. But the whole point of these little videos is to answer questions in a video format rather than in text. And the whole purpose is to make it clearer to understand and hopefully definitively answer the question. So hopefully this cleared it up for you, John, and, um, and it helps you out in solving this dilemma that you're in. All right. And I'll be back shortly with another continuing series of my Back to Basics which was coincidentally going to be about push buttons, uh, but I wasn't going to go so deep into these type of switches here. But I'm going to be working on that video, and hopefully it'll be up in a few days. All right? Thank you guys very much for watching. Welcome back, and I'll see you on the next one.